taking your time. I would like you to tell us, please, uh, who you are and what you are doing. Uh, I am, my name is Pascal Goro and I am uh, an osteopath, practicing osteopathy since uh, more than 25 years um, as well. So I'm a clinician and uh, I do some research uh, related to osteopathy and uh, neuroscience. And I uh, do lecturing uh, here in Canada and also uh, abroad in Europe. Thank you very much. So what was your personal motivation to write and give your own courses? So my motivation to do my uh, own courses is that uh, I very uh, well like teaching and to uh, to share my knowledge uh, with people. And this, I think, is uh, it's very important, especially in some domain than uh, I believe I have some some skills and uh, maybe new area in uh, for osteopaths. So I like to share those with with them. You have been working as an osteopath, scientist, and teacher for more than twenty or let's say twenty five years. What thrives you? Well, I mean, uh, I think that uh, what thrives me is that uh, I like to help people. Uh, the best uh, way I can and uh, helping uh, each other. Uh, this is a pleasure for me. So, uh, and also to uh, maintain my uh, my skill and my knowledge and share share it with with other and try to help my patient the best I can. Sounds very nice. And I think the people that you are teaching uh, they feel the same way as well. With your motivation yeah they are, yeah they are quite happy indeed in regard to your upcoming masterclass this year can you explain the neuroendocrine and immunological effects of spiny manipulations that you are going to be teaching yeah so uh, uh the neuroendocrine and immunological effect of spinal manipulation so we know that uh, spinal manipulation affects uh, reflexes uh, in the spine. They are driven by the uh, peripheral and autonomic nervous system. So uh, based on the, the previous uh, uh, work uh, in the 50s by uh, uh, Irvin Kaur and, and Dan Slow about the uh, facilitation segment and the uh, uh, somatovisceral and viscerosomatic reflex. So which are mediated by the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system actually is part of the uh, neuroendocrine and uh, immunolog immunological system. So they are all linked together. We cannot separate them. And uh, of course, because of the, the spine and the spine through the spinal cord and through uh, the vagus nerve uh, center and uh, uh, osteopathic center in relationship with the uh, sympathetic nervous system so we can mediate uh, different neuroendocrine and immunological effect uh, in the body. That sounds very interesting. Thank you very much. In a 2019 study you treated 10 people with anxiety disorder, irritable bowel syndrome and chronic pain as well using non-invasive vagus nerve uh, stimulation. Can you tell us a bit more about the study and its findings? So this was uh, uh, original, the first study done in a private uh, healthcare uh, center about uh, uh, testing uh, the, uh, the possible uh, non-invasive uh, vagus nerve stimulation treatment to treat those kind of condition. So uh, it was a good experience. Um, and we had uh, interesting results uh, and mainly the results was a clinical positive clinical effect unfortunately uh, static we didn't reach statistical uh, significance because the power uh, of the study was a bit low uh, we didn't have uh, many patients uh, for each group so uh, if we double so we tested that uh, if we have doubled the number of the patient of each group, we would have reached uh, statistical significance. So it was a, a underpowered study. We get a good uh, positive clinical effect 
and uh, uh, also showing that uh, it was safe and very well tolerated. So uh, it was uh, it was good for that. Are you planning on redoing the um, the study again? So uh, not this one, but uh, I am working now in collaboration with uh, uh, a guy, a PhD from uh, a Department of, uh, of Medicine in University in Madrid, and we are working both of uh, uh, a chronic, so it's a, it's a long term, let's say, non-invasive stimulation for a patient suffering from uh, rheumatoid arthritis. We, because we know uh, uh, the literature uh, tell us that uh, it could be um, uh, uh, adjunct treatment to medicine, uh, the non-invasive vagus nerve stimulation for uh, this autoimmune uh, condition. The fact is that uh, this is a very interesting case. Again, it's a, it's a original uh, work that we have done because uh, we did this study with a patient uh, who have had a, a previous splenectomy and the spleen is very important mediator uh, of the uh, innate immune system and mediating uh, immunological uh, effect through the vagus nerve but of course at this patient uh, we have to uh, demonstrate that uh, without the spleen there is still activation of other uh, immunoneurological uh, 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 effect and endocrine effect to other uh, anti-inflammatory pathway and that uh, we are uh, doing now so uh, we are quite well advanced in the reduction of the manuscript uh, we have done the statistical study already so uh, we're working on the discussion and uh, we hope so. We hope that uh, we, we it will be ready for uh, uh, sending to publication, uh, maybe in fall time. That sounds very interesting. That also looks like, or that very sounds like, you are um, having a lot of things to do right now, having a lot of work. Apart from non-invasive stimulations of the vagus nerve, how do you treat the vagus nerve with uh, manu manual techniques? But there are there are very different way to approaching because it's a cranial nerve exiting uh, uh, the the cranium and going down along the neck and he innervates uh, almost all the organs. So through all the organ he innervates and they are in uh, linked with the uh, immunological system. It's a very easy to access this system. Not the nerve itself because it's go go too deep in the body but uh, uh, with uh, soft tissue um, technique along the neck with uh, sub uh, suboccipital inhibition uh, we have an effect to uh, the vagus nerve and also through uh, partial um, technique uh, we also target the system and again it's difficult to isolate technique for the vagus nerve it doesn't really exist because it's uh, um, deep in the body so uh, through fascia we can access it through the organ we can access it but at the end we access the all uh, neuro uh, immunological uh, nervous system and also with sacrum and the pelvis right are there other cranial nerves that you've been able to treat successfully using manual techniques? On the cranial nerve, uh, of course, uh, we can uh, very easily target the uh, trigeminal nerve, right? Because he innervates, uh, uh, he innervates, uh, he's sensitive for the face, uh, and his connection is in connection with the vagus nerve. So from him, we can access the vagus nerve. Uh, and from the vagus nerve, we have an impact to the trigeminal nerve as well, vice versa. But also the fascial nerve, uh, because it's in close connection. Uh, the spinal accessory nerve also, which is in connection to the uh, uh, with the vagus nerve. Uh, but I would say, uh, even the uh, the uh, olfactory nerve or 
or the nerve, uh, which is a parasympathetic uh, uh, innervation, like um, um, the uh, uh, oculomotor nerves, right? We can also have an impact, but uh, I'm not sure anybody measure it, so it's just hypothesis. Okay. That well, sounds very interesting, I must say. Uh, from the master classes and the vagus nerve, I would like to come back to uh, your daily life or your daily life as an osteopath. So I would very much like to know how you personally combine Western medicine with osteopathy, osteopathy in your practice. So, you know, Jonas, uh, I, I would say I'm practicing integrative osteopathy and integrative osteopathy, it's a... Uh, uh, like uh, a system uh, of medicine then can combine uh, the osteopathic approach or, and modern approach. Uh, the modern approach that I use is bioelectronic medicine, so non-invasive vagus nerve stimulation or trigeminal stimulation. And, and uh, basically it depends on the severity of the case. So I don't do the vagus nerve stimulation for all, every patient, but sever, very severe case, which are very difficult to uh, to expect improvement with osteopathy because it's very complex. Uh, several case with uh, comorbidities, the vagus nerve stimulation do a great job, and then afterwards, uh, also the patient can can see an osteopath or see me, right, to uh, combine those two, two approach, but try to uh, uh, target the most important thing, which is uh, uh, for the patient. So, and in several case, uh, we have to rebalance the neuroendocrine and immunological system through the vagus nerve stimulation. And we do objectivate this through uh, heart rate variability analysis. Thank you very much. And last but not least, what we, were, what we were very interested in, because you are doing so many things all at once, where do you see yourself, let's say, in five years? Oh, Jonas, in five years, I hope that uh, I would have finished, I would have probably finished uh, my master, master degree in neuroscience and starting a PhD in neuroscience. I wish you all the best luck for that in the future. I wish you a very good day and all the team, and thank you for the invitation and for the interview. and. Uh, Again, uh, take care. Uh, COVID is improving, I guess, everywhere in uh, Dutchland as well. And uh, so it will, it will be safe, very safe to travel and to meet you guys there in, uh, in October and, and later on next year. Thank you very much.